now for the other side. And for the negative, here we have Dr. Kathleen Richardson. You have 10 minutes. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here at Idea City. My name is Kathleen Richardson, and I'm the director of the Campaign Against Sex Robots. Now, a lot of people ask me, they say, what is the Campaign of sex Against Sex Robots? What is it all about? What are you trying to do? If you want to understand what we're trying to do at the campaign, you have to understand how important we think empathy is and how we're against slavery. So the campaign is for empathy and anti-slavery. Now, before we go any further, I don't want you to think that when I'm talking about these things, I'm talking about the dolls, the inanimate objects getting harmed. Inanimate objects can't be harmed. People can. What I'm talking about is the way that we dehumanize people in our society, and we treat them as objects. We treat them as sex objects, and that contributes to their dehumanization. So what is empathy, and why is it important? You know, empathy is a very special human quality. Empathy is about taking into account what another person is thinking and feeling, and responding appropriately to him. If we didn't have empathy, we wouldn't actually be able to relate to each other as anything but objects. Empathy is not about projecting onto or appropriating someone to use as you want. That's not, that's not what empathy is about. Now, you can do that with an object. I'm happy for you to do that with an object, but I don't want you to do that with the person. So do sex robots contribute to developing empathy or interrupt it? I want to say here today that it interrupts the development of our empathy. It's part of an elaboration, part of a new kind of technological elaboration that rests on a very dehumanizing practice where people are treated as sex objects, where people's bodies are exchanged around the world. So did we get the idea for the inspiration for sex robots from some loving relationship between human beings? Well, let's see what David had to say about why we should develop sex robots and where he got the idea from. So he was asked by a journalist at Scientific America, <clears throat> so what was it like researching the possibility of sex with robots? You ended up writing a lot about sex dolls, did you know about the sex, robot, sex dolls before you wrote the book? No, he hadn't thought about them at all. It was absolutely fascinating doing the research. Then I got the idea that sex with dolls is like sex with prostitutes. You know, the prostitute doesn't love you or care for you. He's only interested in the size of your wallet. So I think robots can simulate love. But even if they can't, so what? People pray prostitutes, millions and millions for regular services. I thought prostitution was a very good analogy. Now, when I first read that statement, I was reeling from it. So if you're not reeling from it, I want to tell you what's wrong with that statement. There's a clear parallel in that statement between being a person and being a, th a thing. Being a live, human, prostituted woman, or man for that matter, and being a thing, an inanimate object. And this is something that we address in our campaign. Now, some people who develop sex robots will say, you know, sex robots are going to reduce prostitution, and they're going to end child rape, because now you can have these artificial entities that people can take out their frustrations on. Other people say it's just going to be like a, you know, it's going to add to the sexual repertoire, like another option on the menu. In Japan today, they are selling child sex dolls. These child sex dolls resemble five-year-old girls, and they're sold to adults as sex dolls. And you know the arguments on this company's website? The arguments on this company's website are used, are promoted by people like Levy and others, who basically have no understanding how inequality, gender, economic inequality works, and how harmful producing these objects and putting them into the world is for children. And I want to be clear about this. Children are not responsible for representations of themselves. They have no power. 
Representations that we have of children come from the minds of adults, and child sex dolls come from the mind of adults who are sexually aroused by children and infants. And you know what's more? Studies have found that an idea that begins as a very nebulous idea, you know, that you might be a bit sexually attracted to something, well, if you've got images and objects out there in the world, you can consolidate it. You can actually concentrate it. So I want to be clear. I think we need to take a strong stand against the way in which children are represented as sexual beings in any images and in any products in our society. But the second thing, and this is really important, is we need to stop thinking about the sex trade, and that means prostitution and pornography, and then all the tech, sex, sex tech that's coming out of it, as an inevitable response to some innate biological phenomena. Because that's the argument. There's an innate biological phenomena, and this is just an, you know, a consequence of it. I want people to stop thinking about it as innate and start thinking about child abuse and prostitution in ways that it really is. It's really about politics. Politics is about power. Who has power and who doesn't have power? And who can exert power over others? <clears throat> so let me concretize this for you. Let me make it really clear. In the 19th and early 20th century, there was an idea of racial superiority, that white peoples were biologically superior to people of color. And they used this idea, they used this idea of biological superiority to colonize, to justify racism, to justify exploitation and cruelty. Now, imagine for a minute, we went along with that idea and we said, yes, racism is an innate, ra uh, white racism is innate and biological. And the only solution then that a society could come up with was developing a technological solution to that. So people said, right, well, we want to reduce racism in society. I know what we'll do. We'll develop some black robots, and then we'll let the white racists take out their anger and their hatred and their innate biological superiority. We would think that was ridiculous, because it is ridiculous. Racism, technology can't solve the problems of racism. It never could. And it won't solve the problems of child sex abuse and prostitution. Now, thank you. Now, <clears throat> women and children are viewed as objects, and this has a very real impact on their experiences in the world. And I don't view human beings as objects. I don't see this as interchangeable, that you can replace a human with a machine and they'll do the same things, because I think human beings are different from things. So there's another idea. There's an idea about about man and his loneliness, and I think it's something we seriously need to address. Because there's this idea that there are some men out there in the world and they can't make relationships. And I want, I want you to know that my empathy and the campaign's empathy extends to these men who have difficulties making relationships. And what we'd like to do <coughs> is develop a different kind of narrative so these men's real suffering, their real human suffering, is taken seriously. And what they're being given, what they're being told, is their real human suffering can be addressed by dolls. So, just to bring everything to a conclusion, what is the campaign against sex robot all about? Well, we're against the idea that you can objectify women and children, that you can substitute them with objects, and it's more or less the same. It's more or less the same. There's no impact, there's no harmful impact on the world. We're also a campaign that supports men and boys. We don't believe men and boys are sex objects either. We believe that these narratives about men as sexually voracious, who can't control themselves, who commit rape, they're all part of that narrative, that worldview that objectifies men. So if we want to create a new kind of culture, we have to start making sure that our society and the technologies we produce in our society are based on deep, empathetic understanding. And, you know, we all need each other, and no one should be left behind. Thank you.